Hey there, I'm Darren Glasso with HP's TheNextBench.com. I'm here with Stacy Wolf, and I'm actually hidden in the secret design labs of HP. Does that sound ominous? It, it is, it is. <laughs> it, it, it's so secret we let you in. <laughs> I'm not a designer by any stretch. I just know what looks cool. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm kind of so you, you've done various interviews in the past about mm -hmm. like the design process. You know, hinted about right. parts of the design process. I'm kind of curious where you guys pull some of your inspirations from. Well, it's from a variety of sources. You know, we have designers from around the globe. You're in Houston today, but we have studios all across the United States as well as in Asia, and then we have some satellite operations in Europe. So we really have, I think, a very good cross-section of designers, both boy and girl, and it's very mm -hmm. important. And you know, the different cultures kind of come together and, and kind of magic happens. I would say from a, a design standpoint, though, when we look at inspiration, we're, uh, and we've been that way for many years, looking at the different trends that are emerging and trying mm -hmm. to make sure that we're very timely with those things, uh, as well as different technologies. When the technologies are appearing, mm -hmm. uh, how do we work those into our designs? but it starts from a research phase and then we take it from there and do many, many different models we're gonna, I think, talk about today. You'd mentioned how there, we have all these design studios all over the world. I was kind of curious about how if, say, a different studio in, say, Taipei mm -hmm. or somewhere else, that they, 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 had, they brought something interesting to the design table that we wouldn't have thought of here in the West. You know, when we, we look at our, our various sites, um, you know, you're in Houston today, like I said, uh, you know, we have offices in Cupertino, right? Keeps us uh, abreast of the new technologies. But Taipei is, is unique in that it's kind of the melting pot of where everything gets made, right? You still have China where a lot of the stuff is produced, but there's a huge, you know, center of technology in Taipei. And our design designers there are giving us kind of, um, I'd say, insight as the, the latest technologies that we see emerging by a lot of the vendors there. So it really, um, it complements the design process. So where we have a lot of activities, um, maybe in the US or in Europe, where we're kind of looking out two to three years from a form standpoint, we're also doing the same thing from a technology standpoint as we look at some of the designers on the Taipei side. It's, it's not just one team in one place designing all these things. It's a collaborative effort from all over the world. How long does it take to actually design a specific laptop or desktop? Obviously, there's a lot of decisions made along the way. It depends on the product. Um, mm -hmm. You know, most of our development, really, we, we, we look at it from a language standpoint. You know, what what is going to be that generation of product that's going to be coming out? And we'll spend many months um, developing that. Uh, testing the form factors, testing the actual form of the product. Mm -hmm. uh, we have on staff human factors engineers, so we're always testing how it feels in the hand and the weight of the product. But we use uh, a lot of research where we we'll go out and um, put it in the home and see the context of it. And is it you know appropriate? Is it is it the right design that we want to do? Um, how does it appeal to certain audiences? Uh, one of the things that we have kind of shifted um, as we start to look at personas is making sure that we're not designing just for the mass, we're designing for you. And so as we look for kind of unique areas for us to embrace this new technology, how do we make sure that it connects with that end user? So we'll do a lot of research, get the input, feed it back into the design team. But you know we're always looking to bring something new, something creative with the product. Mm -hmm. um, but you know at the end of the day, we're also looking at a product where we're trying to distill it down to the simplest thing, right? Get it down to something that is um, you know as minimal as possible, right? We mm -hmm. don't want a lot of extraneous details anymore. So we go through that um, over and over again. It's kind of a redundant process as we go through until mm -hmm. we feel that we have the right form, and then we move forward into bringing the engineering team in and all that uh, to create the product. Gotcha. Obviously, there's, there's always like a zeitgeist of the moment for mm. products going a certain way, mm -hmm. but you always try to like veer and look for that different angle. Well, I, I, I think, you know, a, a laptop's a laptop, if you will, in the sense of a form factor, but we've tried to carve our, our little niche, if you will, on what we do. Um, I think the key thing for us is we're looking to the users of many times of you know mm. what has highest appeal, what are the different forms that they really like, and we're trying to kind of package our, our technology into those form factors. Um, I would say that one of the things is that the, 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 
the, the hybrid is an example. Um, you can dice it up many, many different ways, but you end up coming back to one simple principle is, you know, how easy is it to basically disengage a display from the base? And can you refine it to the point where it's down to its absolute minimum? Um, can you put a form factor together that feels good in the hand, sits well on the table, sits well in your lap, travels easily, goes in and out of a bag? And that's really, you know, as you start to look at all those factors, that's really where we start to refine and, and detail the form. But at the end of the day, it has to be a, a piece of beauty. So it's not just about kind of carving away on the product. Mm -hmm. At the end, if we look at it on the table and it, it has a, a certain gesture, a certain look to it, mm -hmm. that's where we know that uh, it has that high appeal. So. If you were to define that HP look, mm -hmm. how would you sum it up? It's a multitude of things, right? We've been focusing quite a bit on materials. Um, you know, the, the materials that we use typically have been metal in the, in the past, and we continue to use those. From a usability standpoint, you know, we've really made sure that the keyboards that we put in are, are the best that they can be. Uh, touchpads, we've spent numerous hours making sure the interactive pieces that we have on, on the notebooks and, and these hybrids are, are right up there. Um, to be maybe best in industry, if you will. Uh, from, uh, I'll call it a sense standpoint, when we think about the sensory aspect of the product, it's, it's the touch, the feel of it, but you know, we've incorporated Beats and we continue to use Beats audio as a component of our design. And you'll see that even on some of the latest Ultrabooks and sleek books that we've come out with where we really have that signature sound even in an Ultrabook form factor, which is, is truly amazing. And then at the end of the day, it's really the experience that you have with the product. And it's these hidden kind of niceties that we've always put into the product. It could be etched metal, or we've put soft touch materials on these bottom surfaces of the notebook. And it's, it's really a second or third read. You know, you've bought the notebook, you take it out of the box, and then when you grab it, you go, wow, that, that's, that's cool. That's, that's, that's something special, and it's very rewarding. Nice, nice. All right, well, Sagey, thanks a lot for your time, man. No problem. And if you want more information, head over to thenextbench.com where we'll look at all the new products that he's making.